announcements from your bulletin. Bulletins for the month of November are dedicated to the glory of God and loving memory of Russell, Doris, David, George Buffett, and Charles Diamond by James and Jean and family. <coughs> Harry, Hazel, and Lane Ramsey by Marie, Enzer, and family. Albert, Agnes, Harry Barlow, Francis Barlow by Marie, Enzer, and family. Edgar Noe by brothers and sisters. Peter Miller by Rowena and family. Earl and Eva Callow, Betty Ellis by Brian and Claire and family. Earl Strongman by Helen and Elmer Hutchinson and family. James, Marion, and Sharon McCoodle by Carl, Debbie, and family. Gordon Drowsdale by Wayne and Janice Drowsdale. Services next Sunday, November 27th at 7 p.m. in the Lot 14 Church and online on YouTube. It is the Lot 14 Angel Tree <coughs> service. Reminder of the carrying covered, all saw his needs as it usually does throughout the year. And people find, especially this time of year, a time of difficulty. So we are reminded to not forget the carrying covered in Time Valley. Consider making a non perishable food donation on Sunday mornings. All food will be gathered and delivered to the covered if left at the front end of our churches. Gifts with Vision, uh, those are the annual catalogs which come out from the United Church and the, they're present at the back of the church on the side table. There are limited copies, so if you take one, please consider bringing it back after you have finished with it. Hospice PEI's 28th annual Let the Light Shine campaign will be running in the West Prince regions once again. Christmas tree will be set up on these days at the list below. And we welcome anyone to come and hang an ornament in memory of a loved one on the tree. The location is the Tignish Co-op on Thursday, November 24th, Friday, November 25th from 10 until 8. The O'Leary Co-op Thursday, November 24th, Friday 25th, also 10 to 8. And the Alberton Independent Grocer, Thursday, December 1, Friday, December 2, 10 until 8. And Bloomfield Foodland, Friday, December 2nd, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Those are the published ones. Are there any yet to be published that you need to make known? Sometimes you can get busy this time of the year. Not hearing any, we shall proceed to our candle lighting. Sunday once again. We find ourselves in the waiting days of the Pentecost season. Autumn calls us through times of transition witnessed by shorter daylight and cooling of temperatures. Our worship calendar is closing for another year, only to open the following week with a new Advent beginning. Come, let us worship together as followers of Christ the King. Let us pray together. One verse of the Lord, Lord, we celebrate this day in unity of the Holy Spirit, coming together in praise of your great grace. Guide us always as we trust in your ways, and may your teachings inspire us to proclaim your goodness within the world. Amen. And our opening hymn is number 330. Three, three, oh.
<laughs> Welcome our youth into our gathering this morning, and I brought a latest edition of the West Prince graphic this morning. You may have seen on the front page this lady, I believe she's from the Tignish area, and she has over a hundred descendants. Marjorie Jeffrey is her name. And when they uh, started to do the family count, they decided that they had 98 descendants. But since that total was arrived at, they now have 104. <laughs> she had nine children. She has 34 grandchildren, 61 great-grandchildren, and nine great-great-grandchildren. Quite amazing. So that is, she knows the definition of family. That is for sure. And to our youth, I would say that church too is family because we have, we considered your extended family. You have family at home, but when you become part of a Sunday school and a church and youth group, then you start to feel like your family too. So, and I know you've got some instruction coming, so if you wish to come forward for a time together. part of our extended family. So what I wanted to talk a little bit about this morning and we're going to talk a little bit more about is forgiveness. Anybody ever had to ask for forgiveness before? Oh, you did, Abigail? Yeah, can you think of a time where you needed some forgiveness? Yeah? Do you want to share it or you just want to think about it? Thanks. Just think about it and that's okay. So the neat thing about family and extended family and God and God's love is that forgiveness is something we do all the time, isn't it? Raise your hand if you ever made a mistake before. <laughs> and is it okay to make mistakes? <clears throat> yeah, because when we make mistakes, what can we do? Help us learn. They help us learn. Right on, Olivia. Mistakes help us learn. And as long as we learn from our mistakes, then can we forgive ourselves for making mistakes? Yeah, and can we forgive others when they make mistakes too? And that's something that God's love does all the time, is it helps us to know that we can be forgiven when we make mistakes. Does that sound pretty, that sounds like something we know about? And we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we go upstairs today. But before we go up, do you want to say a little prayer? All right, ready? Dear God, thank you for our family. <coughs> And our extended church family and help us to know that when we make mistakes we will be forgiven and help us to forgive others too amen all right you go up to sunday school okay let's go to sunday school Forgive our 
mistakes, our shortcomings, and teach us to respond to your love. Open the hearts and minds. May your blessings be with us now and always. Let us turn to 664, one friend we have. Israel will live in safety. 
and this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Turning to Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 11. Paul thanking God for the Colossian people. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. May you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness, transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been put, have been created rather through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Luke 23 brings us the gospel beginning at verse 33. Speaking of the crucifixion of Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was an inscription placed over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept riding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Truly, I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. Here ends our chosen readings for this day. All praise, all glory be to God. Amen.
In words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto thee. O Lord, our strength and our salvation. Amen. As a worshipful people, we are informed through word, song, times of reflection on matters that pertain to our spiritual, theological, <clears throat> pardon me, theological nature. We are more aware of our physical nature than we are of our theological nature. Yet both are essential as we experience what life reveals to us through time. Our source of inspiration is well founded on the writings we call the New Testament, for it is there we come to know of the messages brought to the world by the one we lift up as our Savior, Jesus Christ. I can recall how for some, it is somewhat of a challenge to speak of issues of faith and how we personally relate to religious topics in general. Back in my early training days, I had a lay team from the pastoral church who journeyed with me over the course of three years. We would meet once or twice a month and enter into various theological discussions. It took time, especially at the outset, it took time for all to feel comfortable engaging in those conversations. That's perfectly understandable because it's not something we always enter into often. And so issues of personal faith tend to be, we tuck them away, they're personal. And sometimes we're shy of bringing them into the light of what it is we really believe and what, how we really feel. To share that space lifts us out of our comfort zone. Gatherings in Bible study have been occasions where people have learned to break out of that little bubble to be more open and engaging, to speak freely within a small group. And it builds trust. And it builds confidence in one another, knowing that what you say will be respected, will be honored by those in the room. And so you learn to share. This morning we are recognizing the foundation of our faith foundation of the church and the world, Jesus Christ. Our gospel reading of Luke is the narration of the death of Christ on the cross. Christ the King Sunday is noted as the closing days of that long Pentecost season which started way back in June. And it's carried us forward to the present day. And now we're awaiting the opening days of yet another season we call Advent in the coming week. The beginning of the Christian year. So we have two New Years. As a church, our New Year's is coming right up. Advent Sunday. And then we have January 1, where the world says it's New Year's. The church is a little ahead. Our new year starts next week with Advent. And it runs right through to the next Christ the King Sunday. We are taught theologically not only through scriptural texts, but through the hymns. And that's because scrim, the hymns rather are scripturally Based, most of them. They're inspired by Scripture. Many tell personal stories of struggle and loss, of need for redemption, of celebration of the glory of God, the joy 
of thankfulness for the abundant gifts that God bestows upon us. And soon, we'll be entering into carols, which will be heard yielding the sense of joy of the coming season, known as Christmas, honoring that spectacular birth in Bethlehem. For some, however, it is not so. For some, the coming season is not a time of joy. For some, it can be a time of loneliness and even depression. This morning I'd like to take a few minutes to reflect on what message we are hearing in the hymns that we've chosen for today. For this particular Sunday, the hymn 330, Jesus Shall Reign, is high on the chosen list. Based on Psalm 72, written by Isaac Watts in 1717. Now what was happening in the 1700s that's notable? Well, probably a lot of things. But one of those things was the evangelical missionary which was begun in earnest <clears throat> with great enthusiasm, carrying the gospel message to what were considered to be the heathen nations of the world. And then some of these folks of a religious nature decided they have to change their ways. And we will deliver the message that will bring it about. And so, out goes the missionaries into the far corners of the world. And they began their work <clears throat> with gusto. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the story of the Gordon brothers of Mont Rose, who went to Aromanga in the 1800s, took their, five, their wives, their families to the island of Aramanga and lived among the natives until the natives rebelled and they were all massacred on the beach. The brother of the first one to go also decided he would take up the torch. And he too took his family to the island of Aramanga and began missionary work there for some time. But history repeated itself and they too were massacred on the island. Took courage to do such a thing, to take your family to another part of the world and be a missionary. But yet, they took up the torch and they did it. In 1862, some 5,000 people sang their godly songs of praise as the king proclaimed their country as a Christian nation. There were success stories within the missionary world, bringing change to many people. And so, there are times when courage prevails and hope begins anew. Next hymn we will sing in the short time is All the Way My Savior Leads Me. <clears throat> this was written from a very different perspective by the famous Fanny Crosby. Fanny lost her sight at the young age of six weeks. Do it is said to a incorrect medical procedure. 
But that did not end her life. Instead, she became a most accomplished poet, established hymn writer in her lifetime. It is said she also memorized the entire New Testament. All the way my Savior leads me was a hymn based on Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You see, one day Fanny found herself in need of five dollars and had no idea where to obtain it. So she prayed about it. She had entered into a time of prayer. And shortly thereafter, there was a knock at the door. And she wondered who could it be. There before her stood a man offering her five dollars that she so much needed. She said at the encounter, I have no way of knowing, no way of accounting how this happened, except to believe that God placed it in the heart of this man to bring forth the money I prayed for. She also found, she also often quoted Psalm 48, 14, saying, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. And this hymn that she wrote holds powerful words such as heavenly peace, divinest comfort. Jesus doeth all things well. Cheers each winding path I tread, feeds me feeds me with the living bread. This my song, through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. She would also be inspired to write blessed assurance to God be the glory and many, many, many others. To those many people, and there were thousands of them who inspired us through their hymns, through those faith topics, and we give thanks to them and to those who took those words and set them to music, and thus they became printed in hymnaries. We also honor Jesus Christ as the head of the church. And as the Apostle Paul expresses it in Colossians chapter 1, may you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, <clears throat> things visible, things invisible. Here Paul is affirming the supremacy of Christ. How ironic. How incredibly ironic it is that he, Paul, known prior in a prior life as Saul, the one, the very one, who persecuted every follower of Christ he could find not only to harm, but often to kill. And yet here he is now totally <coughs> refurbished, <coughs> renewed, restored, converted, proclaiming Christ, the Son of God, the very one God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things whether in heaven or on earth, by making peace through the blood on the cross. Strange indeed are the wondrous workings of our God. 
My friends, let us be assured, let us be strong in our faith, even in the face of all the skepticism that the world at times puts in our path. Christ bids us to look to the heavens, not be bowed down and burdened by fear, guilt, or doubt. Let us always sing our praises to a loving God and Savior who leads us all the way. To God be all glory, all praise. Amen. Let us turn to 635.
today's moment is Bridging Financial Divides, Lynn's story. The Reverend Lynn Smith Reeve knows what it's like to live in poverty. As a child, she grew up without financial advantages. Later, as an adult, when her husband became ill, was hospitalized, and entered long-term care, she raised their five children. Her family relied on financial support from the government to squeak by. When you are living in poverty, there's this attitude you feel all the time, that what you have to offer isn't anything or of any value. You don't fit well with the middle class people because they have a different value system. You think and live differently. You have a different set of hidden rules, Lynn explains. What's different? For one thing, middle class people are oriented to achieve, to get promotions and education. Living in poverty, the orientation isn't achievement, it's relationships because it's relationship that keeps people alive. It's through relationship that you can find help when the world falls apart, she says. Facets of life are more closely connected too. If my car breaks down, it threatens my job, my home, so many different things. Whereas in middle class life, things are a little bit more isolated, Lynn says. <coughs> After her husband died, Lynn studied to become a diaconal minister. Now, through her work at Bridges Peterborough, Lynn brings together volunteers from across economic spectrums. She just founded an innovative program called Bridging Teams, supported through your generous mission and service gifts. The goal is to build understanding, open social and economic doors, and change the conversation about poverty. Sitting together and listening to each other's stories, judgment kinds of starts falling away. Middle class participants gain more respect for how far others have gotten when the cards are so stacked against them. Low income people realize that life for middle class participants isn't perfect and they have struggles too, she says. For Lynn, the work is a culmination of her life's experience and a call God has placed on her life. One that Lynn says you help bring to fruition by giving to mission and service. Thank you for giving to mission and service. You have had a huge impact on my life and ministry and you continue to have an impact on the work we are doing. Thank you. As we come to a time of dedication of our offering, let us pray. O loving God, you are ever present, our steps in life guided by your light, your grace. We seek to be obedient to your will, acknowledging your many gifts bestowed upon us. Receive now these, our offerings presented to the glory of God as we ask your blessings to be upon us in the work of the church, not only within our local communities and regions, but also around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, all things. Amen.
to come together in unity of faith as children of God. So many have traveled the same way as we now do. We are reminded of past worshipers who entered into this very sacred space and others under pastoral charge. The ones who love to sing in the choir, to provide the organ and piano music. We are reminded of the many who officiated from this very pulpit and others who have served in our communities of faith in so many other ways. May your blessings continue to guide our steps and inspire us in our time to continue to carry the torch of hope and peace forward to the best of our ability. Consoling Lord, there are those in our communities feeling the sorrow of loss of loved ones. Continue to be an uplifting presence to those in need and let your peace be their peace as all move forward in time. Hear our prayers for the work of the church in the world. And we urge and pray that leaders and authority will lead in truth and compassion, a sense of hopefulness. There are many voices calling for justice, calling for freedom, and yet they are met with violence, imprisonment, and even sentences of death. O oh Lord, as we prepare to welcome in the coming days a new Advent season, help us to do our best to proclaim your word of love and hope to all. Bless the youth and their leadership as they continue to participate in their activities within the pastoral church. And as we have been taught to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 372, Though I May Speak.